Batman. What is up, guys? This is Megman Chief Fan here. Welcome back to another video. And today I'm going to be doing what is this book rant? Like, book rant, hold on, I'm checking real quick. It's a book rant video, and it is. Hold on, this stupid video is not loading. Uh, book rant. Oh, really? It's only book rant number 10? It's only book rant number 10? You're joking. You're joking. It's book rant number 10, apparently. So, book rant number 10. It's it's the 10th episode, even though technically it isn't, because we made that other video, what, what am I doing, whatever it's called. But, anyway, what I'm going to be doing in this video is I'm going to talk about four books that I've read and uh, five books that I haven't read yet, or like I'm about to read. So... Before I get into the video, I want to say I'm sorry for that god awful excuse of a podcast, like podcast, um, uh, live stream. I'm probably not going to do that many uh, live streams anymore because it just they're not really interesting me. I'm going to do the one a after Song November just to wrap things up, but other than that, I'm not going to do. I'm just going to stick to what I'm good at, which are these videos. So without further ado, let's get into this. Alright, so the first book that I got are, well, the first two books are from the same author, Ann Patchett, and since I'm meeting Ann Patchett in mid-October, I decided I'm gonna binge read her bibliography, and I've read four of her books now, and I think we're gonna stop, though, because one of them was really bad, which is the one I'm gonna talk about first, but the second one I'm gonna be talking about was unbelievably good, and the one I didn't like was State of Wonder. Uh, this is about a girl, this is about a doctor named Marina, and her kind of, like, crew, and she, they go down in the Amazon, and this was supposed to be kind of, like, the South American version of Heart of Darkness, just with a lot less racism, because this was made in, like, 2011, while Heart of Darkness was written in 1902, but it tried to have the same feeling, but really, it just didn't. It really didn't. It was just like this generic, generic adventure story that you see in practically every other meat book nowadays. And honestly, I like Ann Patchett's dialogue, but the story was way too focused on, uh, and the characters were just forgettable, and the writing was bland. And honestly, I'm just not that big a fan of like a, something I I had an epiphany of literature lately, and that was because uh, for the next two books I'm going to be talking about, and that's because uh. I'm starting to love characters and language a lot more than stories. So, Ann Patchett's State of Wonder did not interest me at all. It was very, very bland compared to the next book who I'm going to be talking about. And that one I'm going to spend a little more time on because I like to look at the glass half full. And that is Commonwealth. I did finish Commonwealth last night and I absolutely adored it. So what is Commonwealth about? It's about this uh, two families that collide, that come together after one of each member, one of, after two of, like, how do I describe it? Like, one member from each family, one named Bernie, one named Beverly, they kiss, they get married, and then the whole family's collided into one. And it's one of those family saga stories, though it's really short for a family saga, yet it just does it so right. It does it so phenomenally that... Honestly, I don't know what else to say about this. Well, actually, I'm, what am I saying? I have loads to say about this book. The story is probably the worst part about this book, but still, it's really good. I I really enjoyed the second half story more than the first half story. The first half story was much more focused on characters, which was a different change for Anne Patchett, who's normally solely focused on story and pacing. But... It was great to see Commonwealth have such great characters from an author who I personally think doesn't have the greatest characters in the world. So, Anne Patchett's Commonwealth, I love the characters. I think they are wonderful. My personal favorites were Franny and Albie, if you ask me. Myself, I loved Albie's, like, man-child type of personality. I thought that was brilliant. And I like the, um, uh... The idea of film that comes into here. I love the ideas of affair and love and relationship and hatred. There's just so much packed into this book in 300 pages that you can't even believe that this book does in five 300 pages what other books fail to do in 600. And it's just wonderful. If you want a good family saga, just read Commonwealth. It is absolutely wonderful. <sighs> Guys, I have a new favorite. Well, not my new all-time favorite, but one of my new all-time favorites. I cannot even believe that I was going to love this book as much as I did. 
or do because I still love this book. Enough, enough chit chat. Extremely loud and incredibly close by Jonathan Safran Four. What I forgot to mention with Ann Patchett is that I'm binge reading a whole ton of authors recently, and Jonathan Safran Four just happens to be one of the next one I was doing after Ann Patchett. So I decided to pick up Everything is Illuminated, which I thought was good. I didn't love it like I did this book. But then I picked up every extremely loud and incredibly close. I got the first edition hardcover for three dollars, not knowing it was the first edition. And I don't think they noticed either, but this is now one of my all-time favorite books. I <clears throat> loved it. I loved it. Absolutely adored it. And why do I love it so much? Because it's not really about the story in this book. It, it, it does have a good story about this young boy whose dad dies in 9-11. And he tries to find this key. And he, uh, and he finds this key. And he's trying to put it into numerous locks. And, and he's trying to find out more about his father that he barely knew. So, why do I love this book so much? Since it didn't have the greatest, absolute greatest story in the world. Well, that's because... The main character. Oscar Skull, I think that's how you pronounce his name, or Skull, is now my favorite character besides Holden. He is wonderful. He's like, he puts so many titles on himself. He's like a Shakespearean actor. He's an inventor. He's an enthusiast of like jewelry and science. And he's a, and he's like, a, and yet he's only nine years old. You think, what's going on with this kid? He's only nine years old and he knows like Shakespeare. And he's like, and he reads like the brief history of time by Stephen Hawking. So why would he be so in depth like this? Well, that's because Jonathan Stafford Four wants to make this kid different. I like to call... Oscar the Modern Day Holden, and my goodness, this book resembles so much of Catcher in the Rye, and it just made me have so many Catcher in the Rye vibes to it, because it's also set in New York, it also spans through only a couple of days, and it's just, it's so amazing. Like, I feel like this formula can practically work with half, with half of its attempts, and this nailed it! It absolutely nailed it! And also, not only with its main character, but its writing style. Jonathan Safran Foer is a stylist, and you can really tell if you even flip through the pages of this book without even reading any of the text, because there's loads of pictures in there, there's a lot of bright colors in there, like, there's some, there's like a chapter where all the words are, or like a separate words are like, circled in red, and they connect to make a sense, a hidden message, and... Jonathan Safran Four took four, I think he took like four or three years to write this book, and it shows, because it is very in-depth, even though it's not that long at all, it is very in-depth, there's so much that there is to this book, and honestly, I absolutely adored it, it is one of my new favorite books of all time, I know Max from uh, Well Done Books, this is his favorite book of all time, and well deserving of it, because it is wonderful. What else can I say about Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close? It's an incredibly famous book. It is. It, it even got turned into a movie, which I'm not wanting to watch, even though I've heard the movie is eh. But Extremely Loud and, and Incredibly Close, if you haven't read it, what are you doing? Go read it. It is a modern masterpiece. And then the final book that I'm going to review is a book that really disappointed me because everybody kept raving about this book, like saying, oh my god, it's so amazing. And honestly, I didn't really like it. It's, it's not bad, but it's not good either. And people may be shocked. It's All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. <gasps> How dare you, Graham? How dare you hate a Pulitzer Prize winner? But anyway... All the Light We Cannot See is about the is about two colliding stories. Tell me if you've seen this before. Two colliding storylines that go into one that go into one at the end, and it's about World War II. If if there's a couple books that go into your mind, then you should. But the major one that I think most people may collide with is uh The Book Thief, but I've never personally read The Book Thief, so yeah, I think there's two storylines in The Book Thief and they collide with each other, but I don't know. I practically got rid of that of the god-awful movie that I saw of it, but all the way we cannot see just seems not original. It doesn't seem clever, 
And at the same time, while it's telling a good story, it's only telling a good story. There's no interesting characters in there. Like, or let me rephrase that. It, there's no characters that will stick with me throughout this in, throughout my life in here. There's no like Holden Caulfield or Oscar Scholl. There's there's just meh. It's it's just meh. So. And the, also, I like how Anthony Doerr structures stories. I think he really likes to, I think he really is a good writer in terms of structural writing. But his ver, but his po prose, I was about to say poetry and verse. Uh, but his prose really just is, in my eyes, bland. I've seen this type of style before, and it fails, and it kind of failed here as well. I'm not personally a fan of this book, and if you love it, go right ahead. But personally, All the Light We Cannot See didn't impress me at all, and I gave it a 2.5 out of 5 stars. So yeah, also, Ant Patch's State of Wonder, 2 out of 5, Commonwealth, 4.5 out of 5, and of course, everything, Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close, 5 out of 5. So I need to get those star ratings out of there. Alright, and then I'm going to do my uh, currently or currently reading and to be read pile, which I'm going to be reading in the last few days of September and the first few days of October. So let's get into this with something that may shock people because I've talked about this book, about another book by this author that I really didn't like. And I'm reading this right now, and yeah, I'm going to stop with this author after this novella. And that's a uh, Chronicle of a Death Foretold by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. People, like, I don't, I don't know what it is about this guy that doesn't, that I don't like it. At first, I was like, I don't know what was going on, because this guy is the king of magical, is said to be one of the kings of magical realism, and if you know me, I'm personally wanting to get into magical realism with my writings. So, why didn't I like this? Why don't I like Gabriel Garcia Marquez? Well, after thinking about it, and after a month, af and then a month after reading 100 Years of Solitude, it clicked with me. He just throws random stuff in there. It really seems like it's just he throws random stuff at your face and say, oh, it's magical. No, it's just, there's no explanation. Even if it is magic, there should be explanation. Like, Lord of the Rings, there's ma There's explanations for magic. They explain, oh, it's magic. That's all you need to no do. But yet, Gabriel Garcia Marquez does not do that. He just says, oh, yeah, this whole town gets insomnia, or, oh, yeah, that baby, yeah, he's pouring with a pig's tail, whatever. So, honestly, I don't know what it is about Gabriel Garcia Marquez, is because, like, his writing style is beautiful, but everything else just fails for me. I don't think he's a good storyteller. I don't think his characters are all that interesting. Like, in 100 Years of Solitude, everybody's named Jose. Like, everybody's name is Jose. And it annoyed me, so... And I don't know if that's like some cultural thing, but as an Amer but it, through an American eye, I don't know. That's probably offensive, so I'm sorry if that's offensive. But if it, if, but if he just named everybody Jose for no reason, then that's my that's a complaint. But Chronicle of a Death Foretold. It's about this. Uh, I forgot to talk talk about this book specifically, but it's about this like wedding, and there's a murder in it, and uh, it's just so redundant. It's not really that good. So. Personally, I'm going to get this done, but personally, I'm not a fan of Gabriel Garcia Marquez and most likely never will be a fan. All right, the next book that I'm going to be reading is a Jane Gardens, Gardens Old Filth. I know next to nothing about this book. I got this book months ago, yet I still haven't read it, so I decided to finally read it. So that's pretty much all I have to say. I like this Europa edition. Europa always releases good books, but I'm kind of worried this is going to be kind of pretentious because Europa is notorious for writing the for publishing the, uh, pretentious stories. Like, I'm going to talk about something real quick. Okay, The Elegance of the Hedgehog, I already talked about. and eh, it's getting... It, it didn't stick with me all that well. But the series... The Neapolitan novel series stuck with me horribly. Like, at first I had the first two books at 5 out of 5s. The first book I still really love and is at a 4.5 out of 5 or 4 out of 5. And the second and third book are at, like, near 2 out of 5s. They're, they're awful. It, like, the second and third book, like, they get awful. Like, there are some pure garbage moments in there. And also, Lilla has become one of my least favorite characters in all of literature. She is so annoying. Oh my god, just do something! Do something! And honestly, I'm just not a fan of that series anymore. So, and I'm worried about getting into the last book because I've had it for months now and I still haven't touched it. 
So, yeah, the Neapolitan novel series, I'm personally not a fan of anymore, even though I loved them when I first read them, but they stuck with me horribly. But anyway, back to my TV rep, to be read pile. The next one is uh, Everything I Never Told You by... Here, read that. I, I'm not even going to pronounce it. I, I don't even want to pronounce it. But, because I don't want to offend anybody. So, I also have no idea what this is about. I found it in the mystery section, so I'm guessing it's about a mystery or some sort. But, yeah, it, this is a pretty famous book. I think. Everything I never told you. I literally know nothing about it. And the final two books are two books that I'm going to be uh, reading in October. Like, these are going to be my... I plan on these two be books being my first two books of October. And one of them, people may be shocked with. Because, like, I've been wanting to binge read authors. And people when I search up, like, oh, oh, authors to binge read, this is the first one that people pop up in their head. Gillian Flynn's Gone Girl. People love Gillian Flynn. They think she's one of the best Mr. Thriller writers of all time. And people keep saying, oh my god, Graham, you gotta read this, including my own mother. She thought, since I love Stephen King so much, she thought, uh, oh, Gillian Flynn, maybe you like, you'll like her. So... I decided, you know what, for October, I'm going to read Gone Girl. So, this is probably going to be the second book I'm going to be reading in October. And if I like this, I'm going to binge read it through her bibliography because it's not that long. And the other author that I'm... And the next book and the final book for the video is Dracula by Bram Stoker. I've been waiting a year to read this book. And honestly, I don't know why I didn't read it last year. Probably because I read Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, and I was like, I don't want to read anymore for horror. But now, since I've gone through Stephen King, and I'm kind of immune to horror now, <laughs> I think I can uh, read Dracula. I'm going to read Dracula first thing October 1st. It's like, if this is, like, if you see this in, like, me completing this by noon of October 1st, don't be shocked. Because I'm just wanting to binge this. I wanting to binge this, kind of like gobble this down, and yeah, uh, Frank. I was about to say Frankenstein, Dracula by Bram Stoker. It's a classic. What else do I have to say? So that was the video, guys. And I know I haven't been making that many videos lately, but here's the thing: I'm just not gonna have a schedule anymore. I usually try to make at least a video a week, but if I don't post a video in a week. That's that's just how I am. That's probably because my life is rough right now. But it's not it's not rough. I'm like I'm like a white suburban kid. Of course, I'm my life's not gonna be rough. But at the same time, school is kind of getting busy, so I'm not gonna be uploading as often. But at the same time, I'm trying to upload a lot because now I'm on a four day break. So expect a few like at least a video or two more from this break. But then uh. During the school week, I may try to upload like once or twice, but it just matters on my mood. So anyway, comment down below on what you guys thought about this video. And as always, I'm Mega Man Chief Fan, and I'll see you later, guys.